Hey, it's Ranger Russ. I'm at Hammonasset Beach State Park. You can see I'm sitting out at the beach. This is where we're going to start today. Let's do our reminders though. We need to remind everybody, keep your social distance. It's three possums away from one another, okay? So that's a good measurement. As long as three possums are, that's how far away you need to stay away from each other. You need to wash your hands for at least two minutes. Use soap and water, okay? Really clean your hands well. When you cough or sneeze, make sure you cough or sneeze into your elbow completely. Cover your all completely right up. Um, so let's keep those things in mind. Also, I want to remind everybody, look out for your neighbors. Look out for everybody else that's around you. Uh, we can get through this together. We have to work together though. Okay, I'm at the beach. It's a little windy, so hopefully everybody can hear this. And I'm actually going to flip the camera around so that you can see what I'm looking at and then we'll walk down and go along the beach. Okay, so let's just flip the camera. So I'm looking at the dune. This is all the dune area up here. You can see we have a beautiful dune here at Hammonasset. But what we're going to be talking about today is the beach. We get almost 3 million people a year that visit this beach. So it's a very popular place for people to visit. Now as you walk out here, Let's take a look. Well, first of all, can everybody see those herring gulls? All right. Herring. I don't know if I said that clearly. Like the fish, these gulls have gray backs, a red spot on the tip of their beak. Okay. That red spot is actually like a trigger for the babies. When they have young and they nest on islands and, and uh, hillsides, cliff ledges, but when they return to the nest, if the baby is hungry, the baby will peck at the spot. And that tells the parent that the baby's hungry and then they'll regurgitate their food. Now, the thing I really want to talk to everybody about are these lines of shells that we have here. Can everybody see? It's a long line. It continues all the way along. It goes off in this direction, okay? There's another line right here. So we have multiple lines of shells. These are the rack lines. Now yesterday we learned about tides, an intertidal zone between the high tide line and the low tide line. There are animals that live. These are tide lines, okay? So this line right here, it's the smallest and the closest to the ocean. This one was the last good high tide. This is how high the, the last high tide came. This one here, this is another high tide line. This was much higher but longer ago and we get more of them. Okay, so this is an average high tide line. And then we have way up here, this is our extreme high tide line. So these rack lines, these tide lines can tell us where, how high the water gets on a given time period. Now, it's a great place to look for things. Now, many of you have not heard of beachcombing before. Beachcombing was very common years ago, and most of the adults probably know. All beachcombing is, is walking along a beach and looking for cool things. The rack line is the best place to find things because this is where the tides carry in anything that can float. It will also push light things like shells up as the wave action. You can see the waves down here. As those waves push in any materials, they end up in a line. We can see there's a, a current rack line right here. So let's take a look at this. You can see there's some shells, some seaweed. You get some different kinds of stones. Here we've got an orange one here. That one's pretty cool. Probably a, a type of quartz, but a lot of times when it's orange, it's got iron in it. All right, let's walk along here and see what else that we can find. Maybe something cool that I can talk to you about. You can see the gulls. Now, what do you think they're doing? They're walking the rack line just like I am, but they're looking for food. Anything that the tide has brought in that they might be able to eat, like a dead fish, 
maybe a live crab or even a dead crab, anything that's being pushed in by the water, that's what they're going to be able to eat. They might even eat some seaweed. A lot of times there might be things in the seaweed, like amphipods and isopods. I've been talking a lot about those lately. Here's something. All right, this is what we're going to talk about. So we found <coughs> this. All right. It looks kind of like seaweed and most people that find it, that's what they think it is. They think that this is seaweed. This is actually a sponge, a sea sponge. This is called a red beard sponge. Now you look at it and you say, why would they call it a red beard sponge? It's completely green. When it's alive, it's not green. This one has broken off and washed up on the, on the shore. When they're alive, they're bright, bright orange. Now I've said before that in science, we don't really call things orange. Oh, look, there's a ring-billed gull. That was a teachable moment. He came walking right up to me. Okay. Ring-billed gulls are smaller than the uh, herring gulls and they have a black ring around their bill instead of the red spot. So when this is alive, you've got a bright orange. It would all be bright orange in here. And this grows out in Long Island Sound. We do get coral in Long Island Sound. We get lots of sponges. Um, but our sponges are usually bigger and brighter colored than the corals that we get here. Where if you go south into the tropics in the Caribbean, you're going to see some really large, really bright corals uh, and some big, bright sponges. But here, this is, you know, a good size for one of the sponges that we have here. So these will wash up on the beach. Uh, we also get red finger sponges, which are just thicker, as thick as my thumb. Um, and they look very similar to this, but each of these little sections would be much thicker. So this is pretty cool that it has washed up on the beach. It's turned all green, too. I see someone is saying that there's lots of jingle shells. And what happens with the jingle shells, and we'll talk about it when we, when we do the jingle shell program, but they build up over the winter. More and more of them wash up uh, with, the, with the tides. So if you all notice, look at the way the wind is coming. It's coming out of the west and it's pushing at an angle. So what that's doing, it's pushing all of the sand from the west all the way to the east towards the jetty. All winter long, the prevailing winds come out of the west and push to the east. And we get stronger uh, wave action in the winter. So strong wave action tends to pull sand away. Lighter wave action, which occurs in the summer, pushes the sand back up. Also, the wind will change direction and we'll get a prevailing wind more straight on or out of the east and it will it won't push the sand back the other direction but it pushes the sand a little bit but it builds sand up in the summer so we lose beach in the winter and gain beach in the summer it's supposed to happen that way uh, we lose much more than we gain typically but that's that's a natural thing that happens here uh, at Hammond Asset so do we have any questions going? I don't see any questions right now. Why don't we walk along and see if there's something else we can find really cool like this red beard sponge. If we find some that's fresh, that's just broken off, it'll be bright orange and we'll, I'll be able to show you that. There's a few kinds of seaweed. We'll do a whole program on seaweed, but right now we've got some sea lettuce right there. We've got some Irish moss right here. There's some, this is a tube weed over here. This is a, a pirate's beard or red man's beard. Kind of looks like, you know, something you pull out of your drain when you're cleaning your drains at home, doesn't it? All right. Oh, here's something really cool. So I'll, again, I'll talk about this more when we do our whelks, but this is a whelk egg case. Many people find these and they think that it is the spine of maybe an eel or a snake or just the backbone of an animal, the skeleton of a snake. This, these are whelk egg cases. 
And these can be up to three feet long. The whelk will lay these. Uh, one end will be stuck into the ground, into the, into the substrate, out in deeper water in Long Island Sound. When they break off and wash up, you can see this one is kind of orangey, right? When they're fresh, they're going to be bright white. Um, so this one is, uh, has been here for a while. It's really turned very orange. So it's not alive. There aren't any live uh, eggs in this one. And actually, if we look... No, they, this one did not hatch. If there were openings here, there would get a little opening and all the little whelks would, would have come out. So this one still has whelk in it. They won't hatch now. Um, the whelks will lay, lay thousands of babies, uh, but only for them it's like uh, two. For every one of these, only two of them are gonna get to adulthood, two or three. So not, not, too disappointing or distressing that these are not going to turn into adults. That, that kind of happens with the whelks quite a bit. All right, let's see what else we can find. Again, if anybody has any questions or if you posted a question that I missed, it's a little hard to see out here right now. So make sure you, you post it again and I'll see if I can answer it. What is this? All right, so we have another kind of seaweed. Seaweed and algae are the same thing. So if I've called it seaweed or algae, uh, it is interchangeable. But this is kelp. This is a cool one. All right, now kelp, we don't see it as often as we used to here at Hammond Acid. It used to be a bit more common. But kelp is our fastest growing algae. This can grow three feet per year, but it only lives for seven years. So it gets about 21 feet and then it dies. This is the hold fast. It looks kind of like roots. All that does is hold it in place. This is the stipe or it's like the stem. And then this flat part is called the blade, kind of like the leaf of a terrestrial plant. So very cool. A plant that would live on land would have a leaf where this has a blade. A land plant might have a stem where this has a stipe and this has a hold fast instead of roots. So really, really cool. What happened to the kelp? Why isn't it here? You know, that one, I have to, I have to look into that because I don't know why we're not seeing as much kelp here. I know that people have started farming kelp. Just a couple of towns down in Guilford, there are kelp farmers now. So it's not that Long Island Sound isn't a great place for kelp. Uh, we're just not seeing it washing up on our beach like we used to. But that's a good question and we should look into that. So here you can see some more red beard sponge and it's tangled with that red man's beard. Very cool. And a little bit of orange in here. So if you see that orange, when it's fresh, you'll see a lot more of that orange. The whole thing will be bright, bright orange. I'm going to bring these with me. All right, now, that's something I should mention. You are not allowed to collect things at Hammond Asset. I will collect them and bring them back and put them on display in the Nature Center. Uh, we have lots of animals that eat the seaweed, so I'll bring that back. The reason we ask people not to collect things off of the beach, I already mentioned that we get about 3 million people a year visiting Hammond Asset. Imagine if all three million people took one shell. Okay, three million shells a year disappearing from this beach. It looks like we've got a never-ending supply of shells. But if everybody was taking them, then people would come and they wouldn't be able to find shells. Shells are great to look at. You know, the rule in a state park, take nothing but pictures or memories, leave nothing but footprints. So. That would be really great if everybody could do that. All right, I'm gonna flip the camera back. I wanna remind everybody, go on to our website, megspointnaturecenter.org, go to the uh, Virtual Learning Center. Fantastic place for information. And I'm gonna be adding more and more. If you have something that you'd like to see in our Virtual Learning Center, please let us know. I've already gotten a few messages from people about programs. So one of the suggestions was that we do a tour 
of behind the scenes of the Nature Center. Uh, a few people have gotten to see the behind the scenes, uh, some volunteers, and they all think it would be a really wonderful thing to show everybody out there what it takes to run the building. So we'll be doing a behind the scenes. We'll be doing some storytelling. Uh, I've got some really fun Native American stories that we can tell. Uh, maybe a book, some nature books that we can read together. So look for all of those things coming up. Make sure you like us and follow us. Make sure you let everybody know how great you're enjoying these programs if you're enjoying them. And I want to remind everyone that the parking lot, the campground parking lot here at Hammonasset is closed right now. We are trying to increase social distances. In order to make sure that we don't have to close parks, I'm really asking everyone out there to stay spread out. Find a parking spot with not a lot of people. If there's lots of people on a trail, take a different trail. It's the best way to guarantee that the parks will remain open. If it gets too crowded, I'm afraid we might have to start closing them and we're already closing sections just to try and spread people out. So everybody out there can help. Just remind everyone you know, go to a state park, enjoy the state park, but take different trails. Take the trail least traveled. Go to the parking lot least parked in and we'll be able to keep all of these parks open. Okay, thank you all. Tomorrow, 11 o'clock, we've got another program and then two o'clock we'll be out here in the environment somewhere doing something outside again. Please continue to leave comments on these videos. We look at the comments after they're shown and people do add comments and questions and I'll try and answer everything then. Thank you all for tuning in.